What's up guys, my name is Ace, and this week's aftermarket part for Modern Warfare 3 is the Jack Cutthroat stock, which is quite interesting, and I've actually been having quite a bit of fun with it as well. So today, we're going to be taking a deep look at this stock, and then I'm going to be sharing my two favorite builds to use with this new aftermarket part. And let's just dive right into this with the basic stats of this stock. For its pros, it significantly improves our aim walking speed. While this does vary a bit from gun to gun, it tends to be a roughly 23 to 24% boost to our aim walking movement speed, which is pretty crazy. It also helps a little bit with our base movement speed and our crouch movement speed, but to a much smaller degree. And with the downsides, this hurts our aiming idle sway, which doesn't show up in these advanced stats, but it does hurt that stat a little bit. It hurts our tax stance spread, our recoil control, as well as our gun kick control. Now, the next thing to point out about this stock is it doesn't work on every single gun in the game. In fact, it only works on a fairly small handful of guns, and this is the full list that I was able to put together here. So, in the SMG category, it works on the AMR9 as well as the FSS Hurricane. In the Assault Rifle category, it's meant to work on the MCW, but currently it's not showing up for the MCW. I'm sure that will get fixed at some point in the future. It also works on the MTZ-556, the M4, and the M16. For battle rifles, it works on the MTZ-762 as well as the FTAC Recon. For shotguns, it will work on the Riveter. For LMGs, it works on the 5.56 Icarus. And then finally, for the Marksman rifles, it will work on the MTZ Interceptor. It's also worth noting, I suspect this will come out for like the MCW 6.8 and all of the MCW variants in the game once they end up fixing that bug with it. But we'll just have to wait and see what they end up doing there. And honestly, out of all of these guns, for most of them, I wouldn't even bother using this stock simply because they're not well suited to creating a strafe build. And that's what you would use this stock for. So for me, my top picks here are going to be the AMR9 and the MTZ556. The MCW with the Jack Raven kit down the road, I think will also be excellent. But like I said, we currently can't use this stock on the MCW. But with that out of the way, let's have a look at just how much this helps our strafe speed. Not just by looking by numbers, but by actually comparing it in game. And the first thing we're going to look at here is just the base AMR9 with no attachments on the top. And then on the bottom, we have the AMR9 with only the Jack Cutthroat stock attached to it. And just a quick note here, our aim walking speed is not equal to our aim down sight strafe speed. You actually lose a bit of speed if you're moving laterally compared to moving forward while aiming down sight. So that's why those values are a little bit different, but I primarily want to focus on our aim down sight strafe speed since that's primarily what you're looking for when creating a strafe build. And as we can see, it's very noticeably faster strafing with just this stock equipped. It's actually 24% faster, even though the stats say 23% faster. That's to our aim walking speed, not to our aim down sight straight speed. But that was just the first example. Now, let's combine that with stalker boots. As expected, this does of course stack with the stalker boots when strafing laterally, and it actually improves our stray speed over the base by 44% in this case when you combine those two together, which is pretty crazy. However, just a reminder, the stalker boots only work for strafing, not for aim walking. So it won't work if you're moving forwards, it only works if you're strafing side to side. So there we go, at least in first person, that gives you a pretty good indication of what that's gonna look like when using the Jack Cutthroat stock, both with and without stalker boots. Next, let's have a look at what this looks like from the enemy's perspective. If you're in a gunfight with them and you strafe back and forth and you're trying to be evasive while also putting shots on target, what does this look like for them? How difficult is it going to be for them to track you? And this first clip that you're seeing here is just the base AMR9, no stalker boots. It's just our baseline, and you can see that character isn't moving too fast side to side. And then even if they do the quick wiggle trying to dodge bullets, for the most part, you should be able to track that just fine. Now let's have a look at what this looks like with just the Jack Cutthroat stock attached to the AMR9, and we can see it is very noticeably faster. Now, is this suddenly impossible to track that character? No, of course not. You can still track, you can still shoot, but it'll be that much more difficult. And you can especially see this with that little side to side wiggle that could definitely throw somebody off target. And of course, this is without stalker boots and this is without a full on strafe build. This is literally just adding that one attachment into the equation. So for the next one, let's have a look at what my AMR9 strafe build looks like while also using stalker boots. This is the sort of potential you're going to be seeing here. And don't worry, I'll share this build as well as another one for the MTZ-556 in just a little bit. But what I want to point out here is now people are suddenly going to have a much, much more difficult time tracking and hitting you. Especially if they're on mouse and keyboard, aim assist will definitely help against this to a degree. But even against controller players with aim assist, this is still enough to often throw people off target. And I noticed this right away when I started using this build and strafing in gunfights. People seem to be missing far more shots against me in gunfights. 
So let's dive into this specific build with the AMR9 that I've been finding a ton of success with. With this one, in addition to that Jack Cutthroat stock, we're using the Mark III Reflector Optic, the Tectonic Micro Integrated Suppressed Barrel, so we are staying off the radar with this as well. We've got the XRK Edge BW4 Hand Stop, which helps a bunch with our aim walking movement speed as well. And then finally, the second ZX Grip, just to help compensate for that increased recoil a little bit, since this one cuts down on recoil. And with this, you can see that, sure, we do have more recoil than the base version of the AMR9, but I do find it to be manageable especially for a build like this typically with a strafe build you want to get a little more up close and personal and use that mobility while aiming down sight to your advantage so i have found that this is accurate enough at least our aim down sight speed is nicely improved sprint out speed also improved nicely our aim walking movement speed is 4.2 meters per second which means our aim down sight straight speed is 3.57 meters per second and that's without the stalker boots with Stalker Boots, this bumps it up to 4.08 meters per second, which, like we were just looking at earlier, that looks pretty crazy from a third-person perspective, and you're going to be able to dodge enemy shots pretty effectively with this build. And honestly, even without the Stalker Boots, you can do just fine strafing with this gun. I don't really feel like I need to use those Stalker Boots, but if you want to take full advantage of it, of course, throw those Stalker Boots on, and you'll become a pretty crazy hard target to hit. And there we go, that wraps it up for my AMR9 build. However, I've also got an amazing MTZ556 strafe build. And this one actually allows you to strafe faster than the AMR9 build, even though it's an assault rifle and you would expect an assault rifle to strafe slower than an SMG. And this is what we're working with with this one. So we have the MTZ Para Long Barrel, the Shadow Strike Suppressor, the Chuk Angled Grip, the MTZ Aggressor Rear Grip, and then finally, of course, the Jack Cutthroat Stock. And with this one, again, we do have a bit more recoil than the base version of the MTZ, but it's still very manageable, especially for like close to mid ranges. We did end up hurting our aim down sight speed a little bit, but it's still very manageable. Plus, we're gonna be strafing in gunfight, so you can pre-aim and then just strafe. Our sprint out time is unchanged with this. And when it comes to our aim down sight stray speed, this is 3.71 meters per second without the Stalker boots. Which, like I said, that is faster than my AMR9 build. For some reason, this seems to have a less punishing strafe multiplier. But in either case, when we combine that with the Stalker boots, let's have a look at the potential on this. This is 4.18 meters per second, which again, that is faster than the AMR9 build combined with the Stalker boots. And this makes you an incredibly hard target to hit. You can be dipping and ducking shots like crazy. You can strafe around corners very effectively. And the MTZ 556 itself is a solid gun. So you're going to get a good time to kill potential. And like we saw earlier, manageable accuracy. And this is actually one of my favorite builds in the game to use at the moment. And there we go, that is going to wrap it up for the breakdown of the Jack Cutthroat stock. And overall, I'm really happy they added something like this. I feel like aim down sight stray speed has often just been a neglected stat for the past few years of Call of Duty. And I miss the old days of the original Modern Warfare 3, for instance, with that stalker perk. And this finally allows us to get at least somewhere in the realm of that strafe speed. However, I do find it a bit unfortunate that we're pretty limited on which guns we're able to use this stock on. I would love to be able to try this out on some more builds, but unfortunately at the moment, I'm only really enjoying this on the MTZ 556 and the AMR9. I'm sure I'm also gonna like it on the MCW, again, with that Jack Raven build once it comes out for that. But I think it would have been great to see this on at least a few more guns in order to improve variety a bit more. Now, of course, these are just my opinions, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about the Jack Cutthroat stock in those comments down below. Do you guys like the addition of this brand new aftermarket parts, or not so much? Do you think this strafing is a little out of hand? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.